What's going on guys, Ryan O'Toole back here again, giving you guys another review. Welcome back to the Journey to Incredibles 2, where I am reviewing all the Pixar movies I've not reviewed yet on my channel, leading up to Incredibles 2. And what a coincidence, because today I'm talking about the first movie in that series, The Incredibles! Directed by Brad Bird and starring Craig T. Nelson as Mr. Incredible, as well as Samuel Jackson as Frozone, Holly Hunter as Elastigirl, etc., etc. I have a special guest with me talking about The Incredibles, and that is Austin Burke. Austin's going to give you his thoughts on Incredibles first, then I'll give you my thoughts right after. So... Austin, take it away, man. What is up, Ryan, and all of your subscribers? I want to thank you so much starting out, man, for letting me do this, allowing me to be on your channel. I've been following you for a long time, watching your videos, and it truly is an honor. And man, you picked the perfect movie for me to talk about in your Pixar countdown, and that is The Incredibles. And I will tell you why that is the perfect choice here in just a second. If you guys don't know how my reviews work, I like to talk about the good, the bad, and then give you my score. Let's start with the good. So The Incredibles, directed by Brad Bird, released in 2004, and this really has a big nostalgia factor for people around my age, because growing up, I was around nine years old at the time when this movie first came out, and my goodness, did this not just have the biggest impact on my life. Because I was a big comic book guy, I loved superheroes, I loved animation, and combining those two things, Pixar truly gave us something special. Now, we are not rating this over how nostalgic the movie is, we are talking about the movie and the technical aspects behind it. So I want to start off with the animation. 2004 was an interesting year. They gave us movies with some really bad CGI, special effects that don't hold up today, but I watched The Incredibles, and sure, animation is a little bit more detailed now, but the amount of detail that is in this movie, both technically and within the script, is incredible. <laughs> And I say within the script because this is something that Pixar does super well. They kind of throw in these adult jokes and things that maybe you don't understand as a kid. And going back and watching the movie now, which I did yesterday, my goodness, they, <laughs> there are a lot of jokes that just completely went over my head. And I'm a 22-year-old man and there's still some jokes that are going over my head. But I love when Pixar can do that. They can throw those things in there and still make it feel like a kid's movie. Now, the voice cast is another thing that just completely blows me away every time I hear these characters. Watching the trailer for Incredibles 2 just kind of brings me back to a time when I associated myself with these characters. And Craig T. Nelson maybe is one of my favorite voice acting jobs of all time, voicing Mr. Incredible. This guy just knows what it takes to be a superhero, yet stay relatable and I believe that's the most important aspect of this family. It's kind of, and I know people have said this for, what, how many years now? But this is what Fantastic Four should have been in its multiple iterations. This is the best Fantastic Four movie we have ever gotten, but I believe it goes past that. It brings us new elements, things that we have never seen before in an animated or superhero movie. Even to this day, and it's 2018, what, 14 years, and you're still not changing the game like The Incredibles did? That is insane. Then you got actors like Holly Hunter and Samuel L. Jackson, and then you got Brad Bird coming in and giving us one of the most memorable Pixar voices yet, Edna Mode. No caps, darling. I, I believe there's no caps. Do you know where he is? Do you know where he is? Pull yourself together, darling. Now let's get into Syndrome for just a second because you can't talk The Incredibles without mentioning this magnificent villain. A guy who grew up as a fan of Mr. Incredible and kind of got turned away. It's one of those tragic backstories, well not necessarily tragic, but a backstory that we have seen before. But I believe it's done in a way in this film that kind of changed the game a little bit. We've seen it copied multiple times since, but just not as well as The Incredibles did it. I loved his powers, I loved what he did at the end, sending the evil bots just so he could come in and save the day. It's genius if you really think about it, great voice acting, just overall a really good villain, and that's usually my critique of superhero movies these days, is the villain just doesn't hold up, but no guys, The Incredibles is a great superhero family with a great villain and a great plot, a story that engages you, comedy that makes you laugh humor that is thrown in oh so slightly to where it doesn't overpower the actual plot and animation that is beautiful even to this day you can't see the detail that you can see in today's Pixar films but you know what I'm completely okay with that because The Incredibles is just an overall magnificent experience 
Now, in terms of negatives, I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to kind of spin it in a different direction. There are some things in here that have been done so much that when you go back and rewatch The Incredibles, even though it did the majority of these things first, it's like, well, I've seen it so many times since then. I'm not faulting the film for that because it really did. It's a trendsetter. It's something that started a lot of things that have been used over and over, but it can cloud some people. Say you haven't watched The Incredibles and you're younger and you go back and you watch it, you're like, well, I, I've seen this in superhero movies today, but the thing is, The Incredibles did it first, and that's what I respect most. And because of all of those factors, Ryan, I know this might sound a little crazy, but I just, I love this movie so much. I'm so glad you gave me the opportunity to talk about it. On my channel, I do percents, like 50%, 60%, but since I'm doing this on your channel, I'm going to go boom, five out of five stars, a perfect score for The Incredibles. It's not necessarily a perfect movie, because what film is, but to me, it is my all-time number one favorite Pixar film, and maybe, just maybe, one of my favorite movies ever made. So once again, man, thank you so much for having me on your channel. If you guys would like to follow me, just go to YouTube, type in Austin Burke. I really appreciate everything you guys have done for me. I've been doing a lot of Avengers content. Next week is X-Men week because we have Deadpool coming out. I am doing so much, but this is really the coolest thing I have done because I have been wanting to collab with you, man, for so long, so I really appreciate it. Now, Ryan, I'm throwing this video back to you. I can't wait to hear what you think. Thank you so much, Austin, for joining my channel, man. You have a fantastic channel yourself. And guys, if you don't know who Austin Burke is, he's a fantastic movie reviewer. He does tons of ranking videos and movie reviews. And I came across his channel once, and I really wanted to collab with him. His channel link is in the description below. Go subscribe to him. He's a great movie reviewer. So now, The Incredibles came out at a perfect time in 2004. It was directed by Brad Bird, and going into the film, it was a superhero movie. It's the first superhero animated film to be released, which was very exciting because I love comic book movies in general, just superheroes. And The Incredibles is a fantastic superhero movie. This movie still holds up today, and I've rewatched it for the first time in a while. I've seen it twice now. And everything about it is amazing and iconic. The characters, the score by Michael Giacchino, everything about the film is just classic. So let's jump right into the positives. Mr. Incredible, voiced by Craig T. Nelson, is fantastic. And this is a guy who's had a very popular life in before in his prime. And then as he got older, superheroes were completely banned from the city. And so he worked in an office now. And seeing Mr. Incredible go through this arc of, in his prime, he was in good shape. And now, 15 years later, he's fat and not in shape. Marry Elastigirl and having a family like Dash and Violet and Jack. It's just a really cool family aspect. Also, Holly Hunter is Elastigirl's great and kick ass. And you have Dash and Violet and Jack. It's great group chemistry in there. But we got to talk about Samuel Jackson as Frozone. Frozone is a really standout character in this movie. That scene with him trying to find his super suit. Where's my super suit? It's the, one of the most rememberable lines in the movie. And also a small role that people need to talk about more is Edna Mode. Voiced by Brad Bird, the director. Edna Mode is a hilarious character. And she's coming back in Incredibles 2, which makes it so much better. Of course, we cannot forget about the main villain, Syndrome. Syndrome's an awesome villain. One of the best Pixar villains to date. He's a character we've seen before, this type of villain role. He starts off as a kid. He is Mr. Incredible's number one fan. And Mr. Incredible completely shuts him out and tells him to fly home. And then years later, he becomes a super villain and he's out to get... Mr. Incredible and his family, and you understand why he becomes a villain. He feels hurt and betrayed by his hero, and now he just wants to take over the world and destroy superheroes, and Syndrome's just really entertaining. The action sequences are great. The story starts off with Mr. Incredible. It's all about him and his new job. He's away from his family. He, he's lied to his wife, Elastigirl. He's on his own missions. But then once he gets his new suit and his family gets involved, it's a lot more fun. And seeing the action sequences go down in the city with the big robot, 
they're fighting against. It looks really good. The animation still holds up. And Michael Giacchino scores great, iconic music you hear all the time. The Incredibles does everything well that most comic book movies don't do today as much. I mean, the MCU does a fantastic job with their comic book movies, but the DCU lacks that story arc. And The Incredibles did every single thing that the MCU does right. Having great characters, a great villain, and great action sequences. I'm still confused as to why 14 years later we're getting a sequel to this amazing film. And now it's finally here, so we can't complain, but it's just really well done. As far as negatives, there's a huge lull that goes down in the second act. Once Mr. Incredible is on his own, there's some sequences that were kind of boring and slow a little times. But then it picks right up in the third act. The third act is just amazing in this movie. And there's another character that you get introduced to. The female CEO that Mr. Incredible works for. She does something in the movie where she first starts off as a villain working up, working for Syndrome. Then she works with Mr. Incredible, gets them out of the island. And then she's kind of wasted. She never shows up again. Besides those flaws, there's a reason why The Incredibles is talked about today and why people have been demanding an Incredibles 2 for 14 years and there's a reason why it's one of the best Pixar films it's a great superhero movie a great animated film with just total iconic badassness on my rating scale the Incredibles gets a five out of five stars what else is there to say this movie's incredible all right guys that was my portion of the review for the Incredibles and what do you guys think of The Incredibles? I'm sure you know what you think of it. Let us know your thoughts and opinions on The Incredibles down below in the comments. Once again, thank you Austin Burke for joining me in this collaboration for The Incredibles. His channel link is in the description below. Go check out Austin Burke and his awesome content. Up next in the Pixar calendar that we're going to be talking about is Cars. The first Cars movie, and joining me for that is my good pal, Matthew V. Haynes. Thank you guys, as always, for watching this review, and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe today for more content. All my social media links are in the description down below. Click that notification bell on your way out, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!